is a weird insurance either. It's very strange. And so I um, have been really freaking out about it because I really need to get this lump looked at because my headaches are getting worse. The lump itself has gotten larger and it's harder now and it's worrying me to death. And so um, I want to see a, a neurologist. I don't want to see a regular doctor who's going to tell me, you know, like a general practitioner or whatever, blah, blah, blah. It's nothing, whatever. Cause I know it's something I'm not saying it's necessarily a tumor. Like it's a, it's cancer, but it certainly could be because everything that's happening to me is on the left side of my body. That's where the actual lump is. Um, and it's, I'm having headaches and I think it's actually probably growing, maybe growing into my brain. I don't know what the hell's going on, but I want someone to look at it. So I called yesterday this week, I called three or four times to a couple of neurologists that I, that I looked online and they had mentioned my health insurance. So I figured they took my health insurance plan and I went online and, um, I, excuse me, I called them up. I mean, and every, both of them or all three of them, whatever said, did not call me back. Not one of them. I called them, left a message call, left a message. Cause you know, I told you at the beginning of the show, my hours are weird and everything. So usually they're closed. And so I've sent emails. I have called nothing. <clears throat> so I have to Monday, what I'm going to do is literally sit down, call every fucking neuro ne neurologist in Dallas that does regular neurology. And until one of them tells me, yes, we take your insurance. I mean, seriously, it's what I'm going to have to do because I'm fucking scared to death. I don't know what the fuck's going on with me. And, um, fortunately I, um, you know, know that someone is going to be able to, um, see me, but eventually, but I've called my health plan. And I said, well, nobody fucking even, you know, takes my plan. So what the fuck am I supposed to do? They don't take your plan. They said, Oh, you need to tell them this, this and that, blah, blah, blah. So I told them all that and they, and no one knows what the fuck they're talking about. So I'm completely, completely scared and baffled. I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, but I'm, I'm worried because I have had these symptoms for a while now and this cyst tumor, whatever it is, has gotten larger and I'm getting, um, scared. So anyway, we're going to see what happens and what, where that goes. And I will keep you posted on that. Um, and, um, see how that goes. Uh, <clears throat> so what else was I going to talk about tonight on brain purge? Um, there's something I was going to talk about. I can't remember what it was. Um, fuck. I can't remember. Oh yeah, I know. Um, so, you know, sometimes there's people in your life that you are, you know, I was going to talk about this because I have, you know, relatives on both sides of my family. When I say both sides, I mean my husband's side and my side that we consider to be very, um, you know, to I consider to be toxic people and people in your life that are, you know, really toxic and, and not even toxic. Sometimes people just who are just selfish assholes or bitches, you know, people who just all they give a shit is care about themselves. They don't listen to you when you talk. They just talk about themselves all the time. Or they don't, they're never there for you and you need them. They never actually seem to give a shit about you unless you can do something for them. And so, um, you know, and I've experienced these kinds of people all of my life. I've always been a victim to, a fell victim to those kind of people, those kinds of friendships as well. Um, when I was younger, because I, um, was when I was younger, I was much more, I don't know. I was just, I don't know, nicer than I am now. <laughs> <laughs> not that I'm not nice now. I was just, I was, I was, I gave everybody the benefit of the doubt, I guess is how you'd put it. You know, I wasn't, um, as jaded by life, uh, as I am now then. So in those days, um, you know, friends of mine would take, try to take advantage of me and try to use me or whatever. And I, I wouldn't necessarily recognize it until I got older in college and began to recognize the patterns that people had and the patterns in terms, in terms of the type of people I was picking as friends, you know? And it doesn't have to be your friend. It could be your family or your boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, whatever as well. But if you allow people to do that to yourself, I mean, it really can really um, wear you down and sort of um, eat at your spirit. And I think, you know, you have to remember that when you, a good friendship, a good relationship of any kind is a two-way street. It is not a one-way road. I always say this, okay? You have to really work at a relationship. I don't care if it's with your parents, your friend, your boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, whatever, whomever it's, it's with some fucking, fucking person, your teacher, whatever. I don't know. You've got to work at relationships. You can't just expect them to work and not put in the effort. They take effort because in my opinion, 
relationships are really about what? To me, they're about learning about yourself. They're learning about um, the other person. They're learning about how to be a better human being and how to grow. And most people approach relationships, a lot of people anyway, not most necessarily, approach relationships as if they are there to give them something. Meaning, okay, I want to be friends with this person because they make me laugh or they make me um, feel good about myself, which is fine to feel that way and to be attracted to someone for those reasons. But <clears throat> what are you going to do for that person? Think about how you can be a good friend to them as well. Don't just think about what they can do for you. Think about what they are there, you know, like they're there for you, all of your whims and what you want from them. Um, especially if you've got a friendship with someone who's constantly, you know, uh, leaning on you for everything. It could be money. It could be a, an ear. It could be, um, you know, for someone you need to listen to you or whatever. Uh, or it could be uh, someone who needs a ride somewhere, whatever the case is. Um, if someone's constantly taking and taking and taking from you, but you don't ever see reciprocation, then that's a pretty good uh, indication that your friendship is one way. You know, it's not as if your um, your friendship with somebody is it should be contingent upon what you can do for them. Um, and I find that a lot of people seem to forget that friendships should be two ways and not one. So just remember that and remember that friends are people that actually care about you. They ask you how you're doing. They ask you what's going on with you. They take an interest in what's going on with you. And they're there for you, not just in, in um, name only, but when you really need someone, they're there to listen. They're there to be, uh, you know, an advocate for you when it comes to defending you against your other friends or your family or whatever the case is. Someone who's there for you is a friend. Someone who's just there to get what they need is not. I'll be right back.
So we're back to Brain Purge here on Saturday morning. It is 2.46 a.m. here in Dallas, Texas, Central Standard Time. Thank you for listening to the show, whether you're listening live or listening in the archives. By the way, if you are interested in joining the Spreakers group on Facebook, there's a group besides just the page. Um, there's a group that I started actually like years ago. Uh, you can go to facebook.com slash groups slash Spreaker group and you uh, you can join there for um, and be part of the Spreaker's group. There's other people on there who are part of Spreaker and uh, who like talk radio. So feel free to join that and uh, keep up with when shows are coming on and what's going on with people who are here on Spreaker. Feel free to uh, join that if you're interested. It's um, it's a good group. So you can also post there and find out about events, et cetera, coming up in the future. I haven't done much with it yet because, I, like I said, I started years ago when I wasn't really using uh, Spreaker so much. Um, but now that I'm using it all the time, I'm, I'm really trying to uh, get that... Uh, you know, more active. So feel free to join that if you're interested in that. So on Fox news, my favorite news channel of all, of course, um, Dana Perino said that she is quote tired of atheists and they don't, they don't have to live here. If they don't want to live here, then they can leave. Well, 